Ember will take the kill, and Long Xing is left standing in the death realm, but it is his death realm, and he is out of there. And SKT smash RNG in the team fight. Hey everyone, Jad here. Welcome back to Team Fight Breakdown. This group stage has been full of great team fights. Whether it was FPX pulling off a Malphite flank to clinch the game, Griffin starving out their opponents and leaving them no recourse, or Damwon catching all of IG in a choke point for a game ending ace, none were more impressive to me than the final fight between SKT and RNG, where extraordinary mechanics and team play gave SKT the edge in a game clinching fight. To set things up, both teams are running triple carry comps with warrior junglers and aftershock supports. Since both teams are overloaded with damage and lack frontline, fights can be incredibly explosive and are often decided by whoever strikes first. With that in mind, 34 and a half minutes in, when RNG see only three members of SKT mid and effort pushing forward to ward, they find their opportunity to strike. Let's get into it. As Effort places his ward, Karsik casts his W over the wall, which has a deceptively large slow radius of 625. After landing the slow, he EQs over the wall to start the fight. Ideally, the rest of RNG can follow through and kill Effort before Teddy can complete his TP, or before Faker can realm warp into the fight. As RNG look to follow up, Khan's Gangplank lands a barrel onto Xiaohu's Kale, which not only slows RNG's engage, but also chunks a key carry before the fight. As Karsa's Jarvan alts effort to chase, we get to see just how explosive these fights can be. Despite flashing back nearly instantly after alting to avoid effort's solar flare, Karsa dies. Teddy landed one Void Seeker, one auto attack, and one Akathian Rain. The additional plasma stack provided by Effort's Leona Q and the slight damage from Clint's Sonic Wave are actually enough to kill Karsa's level 15 Jarvan. As Uzi shifts forward to finish off Effort, SKT see their window to fight back. What started as a 4v3 for RNG is now a 4v3 for SKT, since Teddy and Faker have arrived and Longxing's Mordekaiser has been slow to TP into the fight. Here is where Uzi's nearly inhuman mechanics actually catches teammates off guard. Clid hops behind Uzi and lands a kick onto him, which should send him flying into SKT's team. Seeing this, Xiaohu immediately kill alts Uzi to protect him. But Uzi also saw this kick coming and instantly presses QSS and Flash to find safety from the kick, rendering Xiaohu's kill ultimate virtually useless. With kill ultimate down, and all three SKT carries healthy, they dive in to end the fight. The plasma stack provided from Clid's kick is all Teddy needs to find access to Uzi. At the same time, Clid weaves a sonic wave past Ming's Galio to tag Uzi and add to the chase. Just as Teddy flashes to try and finish the kill on Uzi, Longxing's Mordekaiser arrives and takes Kaisa to the spirit realm. Luckily for SKT, they have Faker. Moments before, Faker nearly obliterates Xiaohu's Kale, forcing Zonia's and granting Faker Phase Rush, and with the added movement speed, Faker is able to find the killing blow onto Uzi. Once Uzi falls, the cleanup is easy for SKT, as Teddy outdoors Longxing in the Spirit Realm, and Khan cleans up Xiaohu's Kale post Zonia's. By winning the fight, SKT were able to push down mid lane and pick up their fourth win of group stage. SKT ended the group stage 5-1, which was enough for first seed in the group and set up their quarterfinal matchup against Splice.